Welcome to the Torbram Electric Supply Employee Health and Safety Orientation. You should have a copy of the Employee Health and Safety Orientation booklet in order to follow along. This orientation will provide you with an overview of the many health and safety modules which are part of the Torbram Electric Supply Health and Safety Management System. If you have any questions on any module, please be sure to ask your supervisor for more information. Module 1, the Torbram Electric Supply Health and Safety Policy. Health and safety is an important part of how Torbram Electric Supply manages its business. Torbram Electric Supply has developed and posted its health and safety policy as part of its commitment to maintaining a healthy and safe work environment for all employees and our customers. A copy of the policy has been included in your handout. Please take the time to read the policy. Health and safety at Torbram Electric Supply is everyone's responsibility. Module 2, your health and safety responsibilities. Torbram Electric Supply recognizes that everyone has a responsibility for health and safety. Your health and safety responsibilities are included here. You are expected to work in compliance with all local health and safety laws. You should use or wear equipment, devices and clothing as required for your job. Report to your supervisor any known, missing or defective equipment or protective device that may be dangerous. Report any known workplace hazards to your supervisor. Report all accidents and incidents to your supervisor immediately. Do not remove or make ineffective any protective device required by Torbram Electric Supply or by the regulations. Do not use or operate any equipment or work in any way that may endanger anyone. Do not engage in any pranks, contests, feats of strength, or unnecessary running or boisterous conduct. Follow all Torbram Electric Supply health and safety rules and procedures. Module 3, Health and Safety Rules. In addition to your health and safety responsibilities, Torbram Electric Supply has also established a number of health and safety rules to ensure everyone's safety while at work. A copy of the health and safety rules has been provided to you in your handout. You should review them and ensure that you understand all the rules. You are expected to follow the rules while working for Torbram Electric Supply. If you have any questions regarding the health and safety rules, please be sure to ask your supervisor. Module 4, Reporting Workplace Hazards. In order to ensure that all Torbram Electric Supply workplaces are free of hazards, it is important for everyone to report hazards to their supervisor immediately. Some examples of the types of hazards that should be reported are shown on this slide. Hazards must be reported so that they may be addressed and corrected. In order to ensure that reported hazards are followed up, Torbram Electric Supply has developed a hazard report form. A copy of the hazard report form has been provided in your handout. Blank copies of the form can also be found on the health and safety notice boards or you may ask your supervisor for a form. Identifying and controlling hazards is a very important part of keeping our workplace healthy and safe. Module 5, Reporting Work-Related Injury or Illness. In the unfortunate event of a work-related injury or illness, you must report it to your supervisor immediately. You will be requested to complete an employee accident report in order to ensure that the accident is investigated and all causes are identified and corrected. The same form used to report hazards is also used to report work-related injury or illness. Module 6, Early and Safe Return to Work. Unfortunately, 
If you are injured at work and unable to perform the regular duties of your job, Torbram Electric Supply will attempt to fulfill its legal obligation by offering you modified work until you are able to return to regular duties. In such an event, you will be provided with specific instructions to follow regarding your medical follow-up and any required documentation. The expectation is that you work together with Torbram Electric Supply to ensure your safe return to work. Module 7, Your Health and Safety Representative. Each Torbram Electric Supply location has an employee health and safety representative. The name of your health and safety representative is posted on the health and safety notice board. One of the key roles of your health and safety representative is to carry out monthly workplace health and safety inspections. If you have any health and safety issues or questions that are not resolved by your supervisor, be sure to ask for help from your health and safety representative. Module 8, Emergency Evacuation Procedure. In order to ensure your safety and the safety of customers in the event of an emergency evacuation, such as a fire, you should become familiar with the evacuation procedure at your location. You must be familiar with the location of the fire extinguishers and emergency exit doors. Your location has established a designated assembly area for all staff to meet in the event of an evacuation. Your location has also designated a fire warden to assist in the event of an emergency evacuation. All this information is posted on the Health and Safety Notice Board. If you discover a fire, leave the affected area immediately, close all doors behind you, activate the fire alarm, call 911, and exit the location through the nearest emergency exit. If you happen to hear the sound of the fire alarm, you are to leave the building via the nearest emergency exit, close all doors behind you, remain calm, and proceed to the designated meeting area. Employees requiring assistance. Employees may require assistance in an evacuation for obvious disabilities or impairments such as those using walkers, wheelchairs, crutches and canes. Assistance may also be required for those who are blind, have impaired vision, are deaf or have hearing impairments, women who are pregnant, or persons with temporary conditions such as a broken leg or sprained ankle, or individuals with arthritis. If you require assistance at any time, you should notify your department or branch manager. Your department or branch manager will request information in order to identify the type of evacuation assistance that you may require. A specific evacuation plan will be developed with you in order to ensure your safe evacuation. The plan will be reviewed with you by your department or branch manager if you move to a different location within Torbram Electric Supply, or if your overall accommodation needs or plans change. Module 9, First Aid Program. In the event of an emergency where first aid may be required, your location has a certified designated first aid attendant. Their name is posted on the Health and Safety Notice Board. Your location is also equipped with a first aid kit. Some locations may also be equipped with a stretcher or eye wash station. Should you need first aid, please contact your designated first aid attendant and your supervisor immediately for assistance. All first aid treatment must be recorded on the first aid treatment records found inside the first aid kits. Module 10, WIMIS. WIMIS stands for Workplace Hazardous Materials Information System. WIMIS is a health and safety regulation. WIMIS was established to protect employees from hazards related to working with chemicals. 
It ensures that employees are informed about the hazards related to the chemicals they may have to work with. WIMIS is a Canada-wide system that provides information about hazardous materials in three ways. Warning labels, material safety data sheets, and employee education and training. Warning labels on containers are intended to warn employees of the hazardous material and how to work with it safely. Material safety data sheets give additional technical information of the hazardous material. Employers must provide access to current material safety data sheets for all hazardous materials in the workplace. This slide shows the WIMIS classification symbols and an example of a workplace label and supplier label. The following video will provide information on the WIMIS classification symbols and labels. By understanding the nature of the WIMIS classes, workers will have a greater awareness of the hazards of controlled products and how to work safely with them. Classification represents the foundation of WIMIS. The information established while classifying a hazardous material helps determine the contents of labels and material safety data sheets. This, in turn, helps determine the instruction employers must provide in worker education. There are six classes of hazardous materials subject to WIMIS information requirements. Class A, compressed gas. Class B, flammable and combustible material. Class C, oxidizing material. Class D, poisonous and infectious material. Class E, corrosive material. And Class F, dangerously reactive material. An example of Class A, compressed gas is chlorine contained in a pressurized cylinder and used as a disinfectant at swimming pools, or oxygen used in oxyacetylene welding. If the pressurized container is punctured because it's dropped or exposed to excessive heat, the exploding fragments or rocket-like projectile present a serious physical hazard. Class B, flammable and combustible material, includes the flammable product acetone, used as a solvent, and the combustible material kerosene, used as a fuel. Flammables are more dangerous than combustibles because they ignite more easily. Both can be hazardous in the workplace, posing a danger of fire and explosion. During use, they must be kept well away from ignition sources, such as sparks or welding flames. When not in use, they must be stored in fire-resistant cabinets or other specified storage areas. Class C, oxidizing materials, are materials which provide oxygen or a similar substance. They increase the risk of fire if they come in contact with materials that can burn. For example, perchloric acid used in laboratories is a strong oxidizing agent. If a perchloric acid container were to break while stored on a wooden shelf, or beside a container of flammable material, a dangerous reaction that leads to ignition could occur. Class D, poisonous and infectious materials, is separated into three divisions. Division one includes materials causing immediate and serious toxic effects. An example is the very toxic sodium cyanide used in the electroplating industry. It can be absorbed through the skin or the toxic gas hydrogen sulfide, which may be used in laboratories and is present in the petroleum and pulp and paper industries. When inhaled at high concentrations, hydrogen sulfide can cause death. Division two includes materials causing other toxic effects that are more long-term as opposed to immediate. Asbestos, for example, is a poisonous material which can cause cancer. Other examples include isocyanates, used in automobile painting, which can cause sensitization of the skin or lungs, and some solvents, which can cause chronic effects on the nervous system or liver. Division two also applies to products such as acetone, which can cause immediate but less severe effects 
such as skin and eye irritation. Division 3 covers biohazardous materials. It includes cultures and diagnostic specimens of microorganisms such as salmonella bacteria and the hepatitis B or AIDS virus. Depending on the microorganism, exposure through skin contact, oral intake, or inhaling aerosols can be hazardous. Class E, corrosive material, covers products that are corrosive to the skin or metals. It includes caustics and various acids. An example is hydrochloric acid, also known as muriatic acid. It's used in construction for cleaning masonry or by maintenance and janitorial people also as a cleaning ingredient. Exposure to muriatic acid directly or through inhalation of acid mist will burn or corrode the body's skin or lung tissue. Class F, dangerously reactive material, includes products that can undergo vigorous polymerization reaction on their own, become self-reactive under conditions of shock or increase in pressure or temperature, or products that react vigorously with water to release a toxic gas. For example, butadiene, used in manufacturing of ABS pipe, undergoes vigorous self-reaction unless inhibitors are added to prevent the process from occurring. Some metal cyanides will liberate the highly toxic gas hydrogen cyanide when they come in contact with water. Products in your workplace that are within these WIMIS classes require appropriate labels, MSDSs, and worker education. WIMIS labels are part of the Workplace Hazardous Materials Information System. Their purpose is to alert workers to the hazards of controlled products and the procedures for working with them, and to direct workers to the second part of the WIMIS Information System, the Material Safety Data Sheet. In this module, you will be introduced to the three types of WIMIS labeling. You will learn about the responsibilities for developing and applying the labels, and details about their design and content. The three types of WIMIS labeling are the supplier label, the workplace label, and other means of identification. The supplier of any controlled products manufactured, processed, packaged, imported, or sold in Canada has a basic responsibility to provide and apply as a condition of sale WIMIS supplier labels. The employer must develop and apply workplace labels to various containers of controlled products in the workplace. For example, on storage tanks which hold a controlled product produced on site, or on portable storage containers into which contents have been transferred from a supplier container. In some circumstances, the employer is permitted to use another means of identification, such as color or number codes, and warning signs to ensure that workers recognize the presence of a controlled product. Employers must make sure that all workers who work with or near controlled products recognize and understand supplier labels, workplace labels, and other means of identification used in the workplace, and are trained in the procedures for the safe storage, handling, use, and disposal of products, as well as procedures to follow in the event of an emergency. Workers, in turn, must learn the information provided by employers, read and understand the label before using the product, and follow safe work procedures. There are seven WIMIS information categories which must appear on a typical WIMIS supplier label. The product identifier, supplier identifier, reference to the MSDS, hazard symbols, risk phrases, precautionary measures, and first aid measures. The workplace labels are another type of WIMIS label. They're used in a variety of situations in the workplace to fulfill WIMIS labeling requirements. Workplace labels must be provided, for example, if an existing supplier label becomes illegible or is accidentally removed and a replacement supplier label is not available. Employers must provide workplace labels for storage containers of controlled products produced in the workplace 
or when contents are transferred from a supplier container to a portable container. Exceptions to this rule are portable containers filled directly from a labeled container. They will have to be under the control of the worker who transferred the product to the new container for use on the same shift. In this case, a means of identifying the contents of the container will do. The format for workplace labels is flexible, as long as the three basic types of information appear. The product identifier, safe handling information, and the fact that a material safety data sheet is available. For your health and safety, it is very important that you do not use or handle any chemical unless you have been trained on how it is to be handled safely, the required use of any protective equipment such as gloves and goggles, the first aid procedure, and proper disposal. A chemicals material safety data sheet will contain all this information and should be reviewed. Material safety data sheets for chemicals used at your location are posted on the Health and Safety Notice Board. Wemyss in Canada is undergoing change with the introduction of Wemyss 2015. Wemyss 2015 will align Canada with the globally harmonized system of classification and labeling of chemicals, known as the GHS. GHS is a worldwide system. Its goal is to have a common set of rules for classifying hazardous products, common rules for labels, and a standard format for safety data sheets that is adopted around the world. The transition of Wemyss 1988 to align Canada with the GHS has resulted in Wemyss 2015. Manufacturers, suppliers, employers, and workers are undergoing Wemyss 2015 implementation that will take place over several years. Both Wemyss 1988 and Wemyss 2015 may be used in the workplace during transition period until full implementation by December 1, 2018. During this transition period, as a supplier of chemical products, Torbram Electric Supply will be supplying products covered by both Wemyss 1988 and Wemyss 2015, and therefore both Wemyss 1988 and Wemyss 2015 training is required during this transition period. The next part of your orientation will cover the Wemyss 2015 training requirements. As with Wemyss 1988, there are three ways hazardous materials can result in injury or illness to employees. They are through fire or explosion, physical contact, or by entering the body. Let's take a look at each one of these in more detail. Fire or explosion are injuries related to burns and trauma from fires or explosions. Physical contact to the skin, face, or eyes with any solid, liquid, or gas can result in burns, dermatitis, tissue damage, and allergic reactions. These can be prevented through the implementation of engineering controls, procedures, training, and use of appropriate personal protective equipment. Hazardous materials can enter the body by absorption, injection, ingestion, and inhalation. We call these the routes of entry. Let's take a closer look at how hazardous materials may enter the body and cause illness. Inhalation or breathing is the most common. Materials in the form of dusts, mists, sprays, smokes, fumes, vapors, and gases can be breathed in through your nose and mouth and into your lungs, then absorbed into your bloodstream. Once in your bloodstream, they can travel to all your body organs. Ingestion or swallowing. Materials can enter your digestive system by eating or smoking if the material is on your hands. They are then absorbed into your bloodstream through your stomach and intestines. Absorption. 
Materials can enter the body by passing through your skin and enter the bloodstream. Injection. Materials can enter the body into the bloodstream through cuts by needle sticks. Through the use of adequate ventilation, procedures, training, and the use of appropriate protective respiratory equipment, we can prevent hazardous materials from entering the body. Hazard Classifications and Symbols WIMIS 2015 has a classification system for hazardous materials along with a set of distinctive hazard symbols. Based on their properties, hazardous materials are assigned to specific hazard groups, classes, and categories which are identified by hazard symbols. These are the hazard symbols under WIMIS 2015. Flammable, oxidizing, compressed gas, explosive, corrosive, harmful slash irritant, toxic, health hazard, biohazardous infectious material, dangerous for the environment. We will now review how the hazard symbols and the classification system work together. The WIMIS 2015 hazard classification system is made up of groups, classes, and categories. There are two hazard groups, physical and health. Each group is then made up of a number of hazard classes and categories. The hazard symbols are used to help identify the classes of specific hazards. First, let's take a look at the hazard classes and symbols under the physical hazard group. The physical hazard group includes the following classes. Flammable gases, flammable aerosols, oxidizing gases, gases under pressure, flammable liquids, flammable solids, self-reactive substances and mixtures, pyrophoric liquids and pyrophoric solids. Some examples of these include substances that are self-heating substances and mixtures, substances and mixtures which, in contact with water, emit flammable gases, oxidizing liquids and solids, organic peroxides, corrosive to metals, combustible dusts, simple asphyxiants, pyrophoric gases, and physical hazards not otherwise classified. Let's take a look at each of the physical hazard classes and their related hazard symbols. The explosive material symbol is used for the self-reactive substances and mixtures and organic peroxides physical hazard class. These include unstable materials that can cause or increase the intensity of a fire. Many organic peroxides are unstable and may be highly reactive or explosive. Precautionary statements may include requires specific storage and handling procedures for these substances and an example includes dynamite. The flammable symbol is used for the physical hazard classes which include gases, aerosols, liquids or solids that are self-reactive substances and mixtures, pyrophoric liquids, solids and gases and organic peroxides, self-heating substances and mixtures. These can include substances and mixtures which in contact with water emit flammable gases, substances that will burn if ignited by a spark, static discharge, or a hot surface. Precautionary statements may include avoiding ignition sources such as sparks, smoking, flames, and hot surfaces. Ground and bond containers properly when pouring liquids so that there are no electric sparks wearing proper personal protective equipment. Store flammable raw materials in flammable storage rooms or flammable storage cabinets. 
Examples include propane, alcohol, gasoline, acetone, and toluene. The oxidizing symbol is used for the physical hazard class, which includes oxidizing materials in the form of gases, liquids, and solids. These can include hazardous materials that may pose a fire or explosion risk if they come in contact with material that can burn even without an ignition source. Materials that increase the intensity of a fire and do not usually burn by themselves. Precautionary statements may include keep these materials away from combustible materials. Store these materials in a designated area such as an oxidizers only storage area. Keep these materials away from heat, hot surfaces, sparks, or open flames. Wear proper personal protective equipment. Examples include chlorine tablets, nitric acid, if spilled on cotton fabric, can cause it to ignite and burn when the spill acid dries. The compressed gas symbol is used for the physical hazard class which includes compressed gas. These can include containers that are under pressure and may explode if heated or dropped or may rocket if ruptured. Containers with leaking gas that can be very cold and may cause frostbite if touches your skin such as propane. Precautionary statements may include move cylinders using a carrier designed for that purpose. Ensure cylinder caps are in place. Store all cylinders in a cool, dry, well-ventilated place. Ensure cylinders are always secured properly to prevent tipping. Examples include fire extinguishers, welding gases, propane, and aerosol sprays. The corrosive symbol is used for the physical hazard class which includes corrosive material. These can include hazardous materials that cause corrosion to metals, hazardous materials that can cause severe skin burns or irritation and eye damage. Precautionary statements may include keep containers tightly closed, wear proper personal protective equipment to avoid contact with eyes and skin, work in well-ventilated areas, and examples include hydrochloric acid and nitric acid. These physical hazards do not have a specific symbol. Combustible dusts, a mixture or substance that in the form of finely divided solid particles, which upon ignition are liable to catch fire or explode when dispensed in air. Simple asphyxiants, gases that may displace oxygen in air and cause rapid suffocation. Physical hazards not otherwise classified. Hazards that occur by chemical reaction and result in serious injury or death at the time the reaction occurs. The second group of hazards under WIMIS 2015 is the health hazard group. And this group includes the following hazard classes. Acute toxicity, skin corrosion irritation, serious eye damage, eye irritation, respiratory or skin sensitization, germ cell mutagenicity, carcinogenicity, reproductive toxicity, specific target organ toxicity single exposure, specific target organ toxicity repeated exposure, aspiration hazard, biohazardous infectious materials, health hazards not otherwise classified. Let's take a closer look at the health hazard class 
and the related hazard symbols. The skull and crossbone symbol is used for the health hazard class which includes acute toxicity. These can include toxic substances that may cause severe health effects or even death if you breathe them in, if they come in contact with your skin, or if swallowed. Also includes materials that are highly poisonous, and hazard statements in this class will warn you if the product is fatal, toxic, or harmful. Acute toxicity inhalation categories 1 and 2 will include the signal word danger and the hazard statement fatal if inhaled. Acute toxicity inhalation category 3 will include the signal word danger and the hazard statement toxic if inhaled. Acute toxicity inhalation category 4 will include the signal word warning and the hazard statement harmful if inhaled and it will also use the exclamation mark symbol. Precautionary statements may include avoid direct contact, use general and local exhaust ventilation, wear proper personal protective equipment, store these materials in a secure designated area, and an example includes cyanide. The health hazard symbol is used for the health hazard classes which include carcinogenicity, germ cell mutagenicity, respiratory sensitization and aspiration hazard, reproductive toxicity, specific target organ toxicity from repeated exposure, specific target toxicity from single exposure category 1 and 2. Precautionary statements may include keeping containers tightly closed, wearing proper personal protective equipment to avoid contact with eyes and skin, working in a well-ventilated area. Examples include asbestos, lead, and benzene. The harmful slash irritant hazard symbol is used for the health hazard classes which include acute toxicity category 4, Skin Corrosion Irritation Category 2, Serious Eye Damage Eye Irritation Category 2, Respiratory or Skin Sensitization Category 1, Specific Target Organ Toxicity Single Exposure Category 3. Precautionary statements may include keeping containers tightly closed, wearing proper personal protective equipment to avoid contact with eyes and skin, working in well-ventilated areas. And examples include methyl methylcrylate, which causes skin sensitization. The biohazard symbol is used for the biohazardous infectious materials class. These can include biological organisms or toxins that may cause serious infectious disease or death in humans and animals. Precautionary statements may include that you take every precaution to avoid contamination. Handling of these materials using all the personal protective equipment recommended on the safety data sheet. Handling these materials only in designated areas. Examples are mainly found in hospitals and patient care facilities. First aiders may be exposed if in contact with body fluids such as blood. Note that the Biohazardous Infectious Materials Hazard class was included in WIMIS 1988, but is not part of the GHS. This class has been retained in WIMIS 2015 to maintain worker protection. An environmental hazards group exists in GHS. This group and its classes was not adopted in WIMIS 2015. However, you may see the environmental classes listed on labels and SDSs, including information about environmental hazards is allowed 
under WEMIS 2015. Hazard Categories We have seen that a number of hazard classes use category numbers. The category identifies the degree of hazard. Category 1 is always more hazardous than Category 2 or 3. The lower the number, the higher the hazard category. Here we can see the alignment of the hazard symbols and hazard classes we have just reviewed. The next important component of WEMIS 2015 is the warning labels. Labels are important as they alert you that a product is potentially hazardous and provide information about the major hazards of the product and the basic steps that should be taken in order to use the product safely. All containers covered under WEMIS 2015 must be labeled with the appropriate label. Container labels must be removed if the container will be reused for non-hazardous materials. There are three types of labels, supplier labels, workplace labels, and other labels or identifiers. Let's take a look at each of these types of labels. Manufacturers and suppliers of hazardous products covered under WEMIS 2015 are required to ensure their products are labeled with a supplier label. These are the WEMIS 2015 requirements for the supplier label. There are six required components for a supplier label. The product identifier, which is the product name exactly as it appears on the container and on the SDS the hazard symbol or pictogram, which is the hazard symbols determined by the hazard classification of the product. In some cases, no symbol is required. Signal words. Danger or warning are used to emphasize hazards and indicate the severity of the hazard. Danger is used for the more severe hazards and warning is used for the less severe hazards. Only one signal word will appear on the label. Some of the low hazard categories do not have a signal word assigned. Hazard statements. Brief standardized statements of all the hazards based on the hazard classification of the product. Example of a hazard statement includes extremely flammable gas, fatal if inhaled, causes eye irritation, may cause cancer. Precautionary statements. These statements describe recommended measures to minimize or prevent adverse effects from exposure to the product, including protective equipment and emergency measures. Some examples of precautionary statements include wear protective gloves or protective clothing, eye protection or face protection. Keep container tightly closed fight fire remotely due to the risk of explosion. And precautionary statements on the label may not identify all the control measures that may be required. The safety data sheet should be reviewed for more information. Supplier identifier. The company which made, packaged, sold, or imported the product and is responsible for the label and the safety data sheet. Here is another look at the six requirements of a supplier label. The product identifier is product ABC. The skull and crossbones symbol indicates a health hazard and the exclamation mark symbol indicates another health hazard, which in this case is skin irritation. The signal word is danger. The hazard statements are fatal if swallowed, and causes skin irritation. This label also indicates precautionary statements and the supplier label. 
Note that the label must be in both English and French. For your health and safety, you should ensure the container is labeled. Read the label and ensure you understand and follow the instructions. Follow your workplace specific safe work procedures. Request a new label if the original label is not legible. If you transfer the chemical to a new container, make sure a workplace label is placed on it. In the event a supplier label is missing, damaged, or accidentally removed from a container, then an employer must ensure that a workplace label is applied to the product. A workplace label is also required if a product is decanted from an original container to other containers which do not have a supplier label. There are three required components for a workplace label. The product identifier, which is the product name exactly as it appears on the container and on the safety data sheet. Hazard symbol is optional. Hazard symbols determined by the hazard classification of the product. Precautionary statements. These statements describe recommended measures to minimize or prevent adverse effects from exposure to the product, including protective equipment and emergency measures. And a reference to the safety data sheet. Other labels or identifiers. These types of labels are used on large containers and piping systems that contain hazardous materials. We will now take a look at the safety data sheet, SDS, formerly known as the Material Safety Data Sheet, MSDS, under WIMIS 1988. The SDS is designed to assist an employee in answering four basic questions. What is the identity of the material and who is the supplier? What are the hazards in working with this material? What precautions should be taken to work safely with the material? And what to do in an emergency? WIMIS 2015 safety data sheets will contain 16 sections. 1. Identification 2. Hazard identification 3. Composition information on ingredients 4. First aid measures 5. Firefighting measures 6. Accidental release measures 7. Handling and storage 8. Exposure Controls, Personal Protection 9. Physical and Chemical Properties 10. Stability and Reactivity 11. Toxicological Information 12. Ecological Information 13. Disposal Considerations 14. Transport Information 15. Regulatory Information and 16. Other Information Sections 12, 13, 14, and 15 require the headings to be present, but under WIMIS 2015, the supplier has the option to not provide information in these sections. Let's take a closer look at each section. Section 1, Identification, includes specific identification information related to the product, including the date the safety data sheet was created. Section 2, Hazard Identification, will include information related to the hazard, classification, category, symbol, signal word, and hazard statements that would be listed on the supplier label. Section 2 also includes all the detailed precautionary statements for the product. You may see statements related to prevention and response. Also in Section 2, storage and disposal information is found. Section 3 will list the ingredients of the product and concentration percentages. 
Section four is very important as it will include all the first aid measures. Section five will cover the appropriate firefighting measures. Section six covers the emergency measures to be taken in the event of an accidental release. Section seven will detail the handling and storage requirements for the product. Section eight will list the product's ingredients and the allowable exposure limits along with the personal protective equipment requirements when using the product. Section nine contains the physical and chemical properties of the product. Section 10 notes the stability and reactivity of the product under specific conditions. Section 11 will provide the toxicological information for the likely routes of exposure and acute toxicity of each ingredient in the product. Section 11 also provides any information related to the carcinogenicity of the product. You can see that depending on the product, there may be extensive toxicological information in Section 11. Sections 12 and 13 provide ecological information and disposal considerations for the product. Section 14 will provide the required transport information and reference to transportation of dangerous goods information if applicable. Section 15 will list any regulatory information related to the product. And finally, Section 16, Other Information, includes administrative information related to the creation of the SDS and contacts. As you can see, the SDS is full of helpful information related to the safe use, handling, and disposal of hazardous products. Employers are required to keep an inventory of all the hazardous products, SDSs, and make them readily available to all employees who may be affected by the hazardous product. The SDS should be used to carry out the job-specific training for employees by reviewing the key components of each SDS for the products that they will be using in the workplace. The key objectives of WIMIS 2015 is to prevent injury or illness when working with hazardous materials. These four preventative measures should be part of your organization's WIMIS program. They include engineering controls, the design of controls and equipment to remove hazards, for example, ventilation, guarding, designated storage areas, and sound isolation. Work practices, developing procedures and processes to reduce Hazards, for example, preventative maintenance, confined space entry procedures, and material handling procedures. Hygiene practices. Good hygiene practices reduce the chance of exposure to hazards. For example, washing your hands often, not eating in work areas, and the separation of work clothes from street clothes. Personal protective equipment. The use of personal protective equipment as a preventative measure should be a last resort or used in combination with any of the other protective measures already discussed. Personal protective equipment, or PPE, includes the use of such items as safety glasses, goggles, face shields, hard hats, gloves, earplugs, safety shoes, and aprons. Module 11, Personal Protective Equipment. The use of personal protective equipment, such as safety shoes, safety glasses, and gloves, play an important role in your safety. A number of tasks that you perform will require the use of personal protective equipment, such as using the cable winding machine that will be discussed later on in more detail. The use of CSA-approved green patch safety shoes is required in the main warehouse and at the warehouse areas of all branches. 
You're expected to comply with all the personal protective equipment requirements at all times. Module 12, Housekeeping. Many accidents occur as a result of poor housekeeping. Good housekeeping means a clean and orderly workplace. Everyone has equal responsibility in keeping a clean and orderly, safe workplace. Always place things where they belong and keep your work area clean and orderly. Module 13, Safety Signs and Colors. Signs play an important role in your safety. Red signs indicate an activity that you are not allowed to do. Yellow on black signs will warn you on a specific hazard. Blue on white signs indicate an action that you should be taking. And green on white signs will give you information such as fire exits. Please make sure that you are familiar with the safety signs at your workplace. Module 14, Work Refusal. Health and Safety Law in Canada allows employees the right to refuse work under certain circumstances. These circumstances include if the physical condition of the workplace is likely to endanger you, workplace violence is likely to endanger you, a machine that you use may endanger you or another employee, or the machine you use or the physical condition of the workplace is in contravention of the law and is therefore likely to endanger you or another employee. If any of these circumstances exist in your workplace, you must immediately report it to your supervisor and remain in a safe place. Module 15, Workplace Violence and Harassment Prevention. The prevention of workplace violence and harassment is a serious matter. In order to prevent workplace violence and harassment and comply with legal requirements, Torbram Electric Supply has developed a workplace violence and harassment prevention policy and program. A copy of the policy is included in your handout. Workplace violence can be defined as the exercise of physical force by a person against a worker in a workplace that causes or could cause physical injury to the worker. This includes, but is not limited to, physical acts such as punching, kicking, pushing, damaging property, or throwing objects. An attempt to exercise physical force against a worker in a workplace that could cause physical injury to a worker is also included in the definition of workplace violence. In addition, a statement or behavior that is reasonably for a worker to interpret as a threat to exercise physical force against the worker in a workplace that could cause physical injury to the worker is also included in the definition of workplace violence. Workplace harassment is defined as engaging in the course of vexatious comment or conduct against a worker in a workplace that is known or ought to be reasonably known to be unwelcome. Torbram Electric Supply will not tolerate behavior from anyone that intimidates, threatens, harasses, abuses, injures, or otherwise victimizes our employees. Immediately report any incident of workplace violence and harassment to your manager or supervisor. Any employee experiencing violence outside the workplace that may create a risk of danger to themselves or others in the workplace is encouraged to report such violence so that Torbram Electric Supply can take reasonable preventative steps. In the case of an extreme or imminent threat of physical harm to themselves or any person from a workplace violence and harassment, contact the police immediately. Fully cooperate in any investigation of complaints or incidents of workplace violence and harassment. Module 16 drug-free workplace. It is not permitted for any employee to attend work while under the influence of any intoxicant. All suspected incidents of alcohol or illegal drug use while at work must be reported to your supervisor to ensure your safety and the safety of all co-workers. Some legally prescribed drugs can make a person unfit to carry out their duties in a safe manner. 
If you are, are on prescribed medication, it is vital that you consult your doctor regarding any effects the medication might have. Your supervisor should also be made aware of the situation. Module 17, Ergonomics. What is ergonomics? Ergonomics is a study concerned with understanding interactions between humans and their tools, their equipment, products, tasks, and environment in order to prevent injury to muscles and bones of the body. These types of injuries are typically called musculoskeletal disorders, or MSDs for short. What is an MSD? MSDs are injuries to the systems of muscles, tendons, ligaments, joints, bones, and related structures in the human body. They may be caused or aggravated by various hazards or risk factors in the workplace. What should you know about MSDs? MSDs have common causes, such as awkward postures, which include excessive bending, twisting, or reaching, excessive force, such as lifting heavy objects or using necessary force to do repetitive work, or highly repetitive work. Common signs and symptoms of MSDs may include numbness, burning sensation, pain, tingling, cramping, stiffness, swelling, and or fatigue. Some behaviors in response to MSDs may include difficulty standing up, massaging the lower back, shaking or rubbing of the hands and fingers, and protecting and supporting your wrist area. What should you do in order to prevent MSDs? Be aware of the symptoms of MSDs and report them early to your supervisor if they occur. Seek prompt medical attention for suspected MSDs to prevent injury. Take scheduled breaks and take advantage of opportunities to change posture or relax your muscles. Move around and occasionally change body positions. Use proper working techniques. Use the equipment and tools provided to reduce exposure to ergonomic hazards. Offer suggestions to improve working conditions to your supervisor. And finally, if you experience any difficulties or discomfort with your workstation, let your supervisor know. Module 18, Proper Lifting Techniques. Lower back injuries are one of the most common causes of injury in the workplace. Good posture and following good lifting techniques will help prevent back injury. Always keep your back straight and let your legs do the lifting. Keep loads close to your body. Follow proper lifting techniques. 1. Plan the lift. 2. Ensure you have correct feet position. 3. Bend your knees. 4. Have a firm grip on the object. And 5. Lift with your legs, not your back. When placing the load down, also remember to bend your knees and keep your back straight. Module 19. Health and Safety Notice Boards. Health and safety information is posted on the safety bulletin boards in each branch. The notice boards contain important health and safety information and is updated as required. You are encouraged to become familiar with the information on the board and review the board on a regular basis. Please do not remove or put any other items on the board. Module 20. Preventing Slips, Trips and Falls Slips, trips and falls are another common cause of injury in the workplace. Slips, trips and falls can occur due to many conditions such as uneven surfaces or wet floors. Make sure you are aware of the environment you are working in at all times and pay attention to where you're walking. Keep all areas clean and report slip or trip hazards immediately to your supervisor. Wear proper shoes with slip resistant soles. Module 21, Ladder Safety. For your safety, always inspect the ladder before use for any damage and confirm that the wheel locks are operational. Always wear safety shoes. 
Maintain three-point contact while climbing up and down the ladder. Only carry safe loads up and down the ladder. Obtain assistance as required. Module 22. Safe operation of the cable winding machine. Do not wear any loose clothing or jewelry while operating this machine. For example, no ties. Always inspect the machine before use for electrical grounding, loose nuts, bolts, or fittings that might have vibrated loose. Be sure to test the safety foot switch. Always wear safety shoes, tight-fitting gloves, and safety glasses. Follow the proper operating procedure. Do not operate the cable winding machine unless you have been properly trained by your supervisor. Your supervisor will provide you with more detailed training on the safe operation of the cable winding machine. Module 23, Working Alone. Your safety while working alone at a branch location is very important. If you are scheduled to work alone, you are required to contact your direct supervisor upon arrival at the branch location. At the end of your shift, prior to leaving the branch, you must also contact your direct supervisor. Forklifts and reach trucks are not to be operated while working alone. Please ensure that you follow all health and safety procedures while working alone. Module 24, Safe Driving. Employees required to drive for work-related reasons must follow all of these safe driving requirements. You must maintain a valid driver's license. Circle your vehicle and check the following prior to the use of the vehicle. Do not operate a defective vehicle. Check oil and fuel levels, brakes, windshield wipers, tire inflation, mirrors, lights, horns, and for any leaks. Report any defects to your supervisor and complete the employee hazard report form. Follow all applicable laws, including the relevant Highway Traffic Act, and apply defensive driving concepts. Only use hands-free devices for essential calls. This ends the review of the health and safety modules. You are now required to complete the evaluation found in your handbook. Your supervisor will review any incorrect answers with you in order to ensure that you understand the correct answers. The completed evaluation will be collected by your supervisor. After you have completed the evaluation, you are required to complete the orientation checklist found in your handout. If required, your supervisor will then complete any job-specific health and safety training with you. Torbrand Electric Supply looks forward to working with you to ensure a healthy and safe work environment. Thank you.